Hello, welcome everybody to the fourth European Naturopathic Meeting, Naturopathic History, Research and Legal Frame in Europe. The first European meeting uh, was 2015 in Rome. The second we celebrated 2017 in Madrid. The third uh, European meeting has been celebrated virtual 2021. And this year also virtual. Hopefully we can meet soon in presence, face to face. So we would like to talk about the naturopathic history and legal perspectives in Spain. Um, OCN Fenaco um, is uh, very active in Spain with legalization, with um, contacts to health ministry, educational ministry, and developing the profession, which is um, a legal profession since um, 1984. We have services of naturopathy um, increased 15% per year. And uh, we have seen a peak in registered naturopaths in the period between 2000 and 2007 um, due to a high activity of the professional association and schools in Spain. Today we have around about 3000 registered naturopaths who offer their naturopathic services and uh, this is reflected in the almost four and a half million consultations um, people can count per year. So the situation of naturopathy, uh, due to this strong growth, uh, there were needs to regulate the profession within the Ministry of the Treasure, uh, social system, labor and employment system, and health system. In 1981, a group of Spanish practitioners published the White Book, where um, there were a lot of explications about naturopathy as a summary of natural methods and the professional naturopath as um, have been defined as a profile. So um, this was very similar to what was developed in Germany with the so-called Heilpraktiker and um, parallelly going on uh, developments in America with the naturopathic doctor. So um, OCN Fenaco started to set up um, guidelines, educational guidelines, professional practice guidelines, uh, insurances. And so a member of OCN Fenaco has to have this minimum educational um, uh, educational formation. Um, they all are offered when they practice a malpractice insurance. They all are offered um, law assistance uh, by a lawyer uh, through the Naturopathic Association and, of course, continued education as one of the guidelines that practitioners have in Spain. If we look at uh, the term used in Spain, the uh, naturopath is called naturopata and naturopathy is called naturopatia. So it was easier and quicker to install the laws by the Ministry of Labor, Social Security, Employment and Ministry of the Treasure with having this language, with having these terms that describe the profession. With the law uh, of 1985, the services of a naturopath, so loaned by a naturopath, like uh, economic activities, have been declared as not exempt from value um, added tax, like IVA. So we have to pay IVA or VAT in Spain for naturopathic services. But this was the entrance to the um, Ministry of the Finance that we got uh, um, recognized and declared as an economic activity 
by the Ministry of the Treasure. That was a big step. So with legislative royal decree of 1990, uh, with the tax system, naturopathy was placed inside economic activities uh, called other sanitary with a treasure code 841 for self-employed naturopath and 944 for services of naturopathy. And for example, um, if you have a herbal shop, then uh, the economic activities of um, selling products is um, covered by 944. So with that step, naturopath could work legally in the financial system and pay tax, of course. So by resolution of the general direction of social security, the naturopath is declared as a self-employed profession, autonomo. So we have a, um, a declaration per year as a self-employed with the um, reference of the financial tax number. So with that step, step naturopaths were recognized as a liberal, as a free profession by the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs. Then in 1997, there was another important national step for a National Institute of Employment uh, that remains collected the occupational profile of technician in naturopathy and with a specific code. So with that step, Naturopath was confirmed as a profession in the network of employment. So we um, can also offer services for naturopaths as an employee. A lot of naturopaths work like employed with that code number. Um, and then there was a creation of a labor union, a Prona called, which represents the interests of all naturopaths in Spain and of the employment um, in general. So on 2001, the National Classification of Economic Activities um, recognized naturopathy under the group of 85.1 sanitary activities. And then under that sanitary activities, According to the definition of naturopathy, naturopathy consists of assistance to people by means of natural methods of health. So this was a very important step uh, to be recognized by CNAE, the National Classification of Economic Activities. Then a present classification of the National Institutes of Statistics, INE, placed naturopathy under sanitary activities of independent professionals. And then in the classification of occupations, occupational profiles, the naturopath is classified under diverse methods in health, included the ones of traditional medicine. So these codes are very important for our profession to get a recognition on different levels and to be able to work legally and uh, of course we are legalized in Spain to offer services in naturopathy. Um, so uh, there is a regulation in Spain that is very important for our working workforce, naturopathic workforce in Spain. So under the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Health recognizes the profession of a naturopath. So OCN Fenaco has constantly meetings with the local health ministries of the individual autonomos. So the region in Spain, uh, there are different uh, autonomic um, regions where um, health affairs are uh, regulated. So OCN Fenaco has these local regional activities and also contact to the National Health Ministry uh, of the Spanish government. So um, the, administ the administrative guide of health includes naturopaths since 1995. 
So the Spanish organization started its negotiation in 1984 and the proposed law for a profession in the health system exists, but is still not ratified. So regulation of the natural profession naturopath um, under referring to the law 5.2002 about professional qualification and education is there, but not ratified yet. In September 2011, OCN Fenaco stipulated with insistence the ratification, ratification of the law by the government of the so in place um, party, Partido Popular, the Conservative Party, and we have been uh, in, in close relationship with the voice of the Ministry of Health. The current of the current government, Dr. Mario Mingo, and this is still there and in process. Unfortunately, uh, there has been a change of the political parties towards socialism um, in Spain. So this process is on hold until we hopefully get back on um, contacts to the health ministry. What is the history of naturopathy in Spain? Actually, this year, naturopathy in Spain has its 100th anniversary. Why is this, Why is this so? Um, we go back in Spain, of course, to the um, all-known European grandfathers um, of naturopathy, hydrotherapy, herbal medicine, so, uh, for example, Vincent Priestnitz um, was uh, giving his lectures knowledge to Sebastian Kneipp, and he referred to Vincent Priestnitz on the hydrotherapy part. Then um, there was a German naturopath trained by Sebastian Kneipp called Benedict Lust, who traveled to United States in uh, the end of the 19th century. He opened in 1900 the American College of Naturopathy in uh, New York, where a Spanish um, graduate um, called Jose Castro Blanco graduated as a naturopathic doctor in, in 1922 from this American college. So he was the first naturopath in Spain, he came back to his homeland after his graduation as an ND. And with that title, um, he opened in Spain um, a naturopathic school association and a clinic. So we celebrate this year in 1922, he graduated from the school, came back to Spain and started the profession here. So this year we celebrate 100 years of naturopathy in Spain. Are very happy about it. We had uh, several activities around that birthday and um, we are very proud uh, here in Spain to have these 100 years of history of naturopathy started all by Jose Castro Blanco. Um, he had a... Um, a colleague called Nicolas Capo, uh, who was the co-founder of the school in Barcelona, Bas uh, naturopathic school. And based on this school, naturopathy has developed in Spain in uh, this manner. So what do we see under naturopathy in Spain? Naturopathy in Spain is um, an umbrella profession. Uh, it is like Benedict Lust did define it, that it is an umbrella profession, which includes different natural methods. So we have uh, all that described in the white book of naturopathy from uh, OCN Fenaco. Uh, there is the alimentary naturopathy, so naturopathia alimentaria. Uh, this includes nutrition, dietary, uh, automolecular nutrition, Ayurvedic nutrition, nutrition, Chinese dietary, macrobiotic, and supplements in general. And we know from the World Naturopathic Federation surveys that nutrition, applied nutrition and clinical nutrition are the most applied modality 
in naturopathy all over the world. Then we have herbal medicine, herbologia, uh, which includes uh, Bach flowers, essential oils, um, herbologia in general, the use of plants in different um, applications, all applications, outside applications, oils, um, creams, um, infusions, uh, tinctures, extractures, um, spaguric, um, everything we know where we use plants. And this is the second most used modality, modality all over the world by naturopaths. Then we have the natural stimulis. Natural stimuli as uh, one sector under the umbrella of naturopathy, nature cure models with water, earth, sun, and air. So hydrotherapy comes in here, earth, like um, mud applications, for example, which we know that Adolf Just has been very active in that. Um, sun, which we know that Arnold Rigli has promoted um, that very much. And air, everything that is um, related to fresh air, to um, uh, respiratory treatments as well. So air and oxygen here is included. Natural stimuli. So then we have another category that's it that is manual, or that is included: chiropractic, osteopathy, massage, shiatsu, reflexology, lymph drainage, tuina, reiki, kinas, kinesiology, rolfing. All you name it is under the umbrella of manual naturopathy. Then we have the sensorial, um, which is great in anthroposophic medicine, for example. Naturopaths also work a lot with uh, all around music, colors, aroma, sound therapy. This is included in sensorial naturopathy. So under the category functional naturopathy, we know homeopathy, tissue salts, biocells, um, and spagyric. Then we have under the psychophysical part, relaxations, NLP, hypnosis, meditation, all that we know, mental health. Then under energetic, we include acupuncture, also ear acupuncture methods uh, with magnets, feng shui and traditional Chinese medicine, energetic. So um, then there is a possibility in the Spanish system that if you graduate from a school, you have the graduation of naturopathy of a minimum 3,000 hours program. But then there exists the um, specialist in a certain category. So if you are, for example, um, having experience in treating and teaching and having done further education in energetic, for example, myself, I have done the acupuncture and TCM uh, graduation as well in Germany. So then you are graduated naturopath in Spain and specialized in energetic. So then you have the uh, whole graduation and then you have the expert in, we call it expert in energetic treatments, acupuncture, TCM, for example. Then uh, there is another degree in naturopathic um, education in Spain done by OCN Fenaco. It's a, it's a voluntary degree, but uh, it values a lot in Spain if you want to be a member of OCN Fenaco. Uh, next step would be after graduation expert, then the master in naturopathic um uh, modalities and roots in general. So this is the person that dominates all of the categories of naturopathy, most of them, and has the uh, specific continued education and uh, formation in that. So, and then there's another degree if we are in that um, educational part of um, OCN Fenaco, uh, there is the nat Turologo. This is the one who is in research, uh, publishing um, articles, publishing books, and working on the science part. 
So uh, you can have as a as a Spanish naturopath, you can have the um, title naturopath as graduated. Then you can have the title naturopath expert in da da da. Then you can have the title naturopath master, and then you can have the title naturopath and naturologo. So the scientific. This is the different educational levels in Spain. You have to, of course, um, provide all your um, exams and titles to um, get recognized as in that different educational levels. There are, for example, three or four naturologos in Spain only. Um, so I am one of them. And you only get the naturologo title, title if you are having the master and the expert and the graduation, of course. So then we have naturopathy ergasika. This is yoga, tai chi, qigong, all these exercises. Then we have the semiology, which is all about the valoration. Evaluation, diagnostic, like iris diagnosis, reflex diagnosis, and so on. Tongue, pulse, uh, physiognomy, all that we know that is part of the naturopathic assessment. So our perspective and goals. The goal is, of course, to get a state regulation of uh, occupational profile in all parts. So as we have seen in the beginning, we are regulated in the part of labor and financial systems and social affairs. Um, what we are looking for is the regulation as a health profession in the health system. There is a possibility to get the um, um, professional formation, qualification it's called in uh, Spain, in Spanish, the qualificación profesional, the professional qualification in the minimum educational standard of the three years um, education graduation and then in the section of health professions. So this is the two steps we want to achieve. First of all, with the educational minimum standards to get the regulation at the health system and then in the group of health professionals. So this was would be then compared to uh, in the United States or Germany. In the United States, we um, have a um, educational basis of 4,000 plus hours program naturopathic doctor, a doctorate. So this is something that then under the um, educational ministry of the government of Spain is a proposal from the Spanish organizations to provide a study of 4,000 hours plus in naturopathy um, as a doctorate uh, level. This proposal will go on, and this is our goal in Spain, to have it as a minimum standard, the 4,000 hours doctorate program. This is something that needs time. A university to find a private university that is accredited to um, these programs. So then uh, this is our goal. This is our perspective, absolutely, to get the regulation under the health system and under the educational ministry. Then uh, that the umbrella um, methods, so the all the modalities get a regulation under the umbrella of naturopathy and net, not to regulate discipline for discipline. Um, but regulate the profession. So this is our big goal, that the profession gets its rights, its obligations and regulations. And under that profession with the scope of practice and um, the capacity of the single naturopath is then the scope of practice um, compiled under that umbrella of the profession of a naturopath. Of course, there has to be the educational um, disciplines that um, give the capacity to the practitioner of the single modalities, but that we don't have a regulation of single uh, modalities, but 
the regulation of a profession. This is our big perspective and goal so that the user, patient, the client gets a standard and protection safety so that uh, these regulations are necessary to provide safety to the public so that all the naturopathic workforce has the minimum educational standard, the minimum capacity of, for practical um, treatments and use and uh, insurances that are necessary to work um, safe, safely and safety uh, in the naturopathic profession. Another important goal for us is to establish standard guidelines. Um, this is something that is voluntary uh, done. And these guidelines, uh, we, our goal is to put them as a standard and that the user gets the guarantee of knowledge and education of the practitioner. Um, this is something that uh, OCN Finaco is working on constantly. We uh, provide continued education for our members. We provide um, support on uh, else law issues or um, insurance issues. So we want to set up uh, a safe and uh, specific guidelines for the occupational profile. So this is um, more or less the summary of how it goes in Spain. I hope I could give a little insight. For more information, please consult um, myself, Tina Hauser, as the um, Vice President for International Relationships for OCN Fenaco Spain. Um, you are also happy to contact directly um, OCN Fenaco Spain. We have a website, we have um, different social media um, platforms, um, everything that you would like to know about the Spanish profile. So with these words, I say bye-bye and wish you all the best. Um, hopefully we meet us with the European community soon, face to face. Um, there is something in the air. So uh, September next year, there will be a general assembly in Europe. There will be um, in Switzerland uh, specifically. There will be also uh, a congress in Switzerland organized by Switzerland. So hopefully most of us can meet there face to face in Europe next year in Switzerland uh, around about September. Mm, uh, you can get the concrete information on the General Assembly for all members of the World Naturopathic Federation on info at worldnaturopathicfederation.org. Uh, around the General Assembly. All members are invited to the General Assembly. And then uh, um, parallelly to uh, that General Assembly, there will be around that the Swiss Naturopathic Congress where we can exchange our uh, knowledges and meet face to face. That would be great. With these words, I say bye-bye and wish you all the best. <laughs>